Hi everybody, uh, Tanya tells me there's a lot of people curious about the interior of the new truck. So I guess today's video is going to give you a little tour in here and show you what a 2024 Kenworth T680 looks like. My name is Kevin, I'm a solo driver for Creek Carrier and this is the joy of trucking. So hit that subscribe button, grab a cool drink, sit back, I'm going to give you a little show here. Alright, here we go. This is the 2024 Kenworth T680. Uh, it's spec by Creek Carrier, so it is showing you some features that the company requested, not me personally. Some things I like and some things could be better, but they're the ones writing the check. And I think they're keeping in mind a fuel economy uh, as well as comfort and amenities for the driver. So a lot, of the, a lot of the issues on the truck are concerned with getting better economy. Let's start with the dashboard in the driver's area here. As you can see, we got the famous logo on the steering wheel. We got the same same old controls for cruise control on the left and the radio on the right. And there's Hula Girl sitting up there. And as you enter the truck, you'll notice pretty much the same old door with the door pocket and a cup holder there in the door pocket. You got the controls for the window, locking the doors and your mirrors and even the button on the front there is for heating your mirrors. It's sitting down here, I can show you the all new Kenworth dashboard. And I had a 2019 T680 when I drove for a Werner. So now this is very different because I had all the analog gauges on that truck and this is all digital. So you can see, I'll scroll up one. You just got your tack and your speedometer. The speedometer is only digital. It doesn't have a roundy round gauge for the speed. There's the mileage down there on the left and trip mileage that you can zero and set for different trips down on the right. And turning this, this little wheel here changes the screen and takes you through the different menus. So you can see with the full complement of gauges oil temperature, engine torque, and turbo boost on the left, and then your compressed air for your, uh, your two tanks, your oil pressure, and on this side your fuel and your depth gauges right here. And while you're driving there's a little instantaneous fuel economy like so many miles per gallon up here. The coolant temperature, brake application in PSI which shows you how hard you're hitting the brakes and the restriction of the airflow on the intake so that would be an indication of your vacuum that's pulling air in and your fuel economy but also if your filters getting dirty you'll see that number going up down here is your shift indicator for drive neutral and reverse right now if I give this wheel a little spin up some of those gauges disappear, the, uh, the ones on the far left and the far right, and so it's easier to read your main gauges that you're usually the most concerned with. And at the top you can see the little message thing there. And I give the dial one more turn upwards, and now just the center gauge once again. And if I'm to, if I was to access some of the, uh, some of the setup and so on, push in on this, on this little log roll wheel here and it goes to our menus, like notifications, your trip summary, in other words, your little trip odometers, and various settings, like your time, and how you can customize your gauges to put different ones on the main screen, and even shortcuts to different things. You can change your speedometer to kilometers you can even have it show both miles and kilometers there's a bunch of other stuff but basically that's your that's your digital dashboard this button down here takes you back to different menus and then back to your original screen as far as controls like I said on the steering wheel you've got the same old same old here for cruise control radio on this side which I think is opposite to the freight liners uh, here's your light behind the sleeper, so you can see what you're doing back there at night when you're hooking up trailers. Uh, this is your uh, gauge lights, brighter and dimmer. This is a little red light that comes on 
down at your feet so at night you can you can see stuff down there without blinding yourself and this is your light test button right so you can check all your lights are working properly a little storage pocket right here another one way down here that you don't even know about and then all the usual buttons here your traction control lane deviation hill starting regen uh, this is for your auto idle system what they call the opti idle on the freight liners so you basically lift that button all the way up with the key off and then the engine will start and stop as controlled by the computer so you have your climate control and it monitors the batteries and engine temperature this lowers the fifth wheel takes the air out of the rear suspension of the tractor so that your fifth wheel actually drops down and your inner axle lock your remote fifth wheel disengage and this is for sliding the fifth wheel which actually is useless because the company has it set where they want it and you cannot move it your climate controls are all the same with auto max air conditioning your rear bunk and your fan and it's the same old same old Kenworth radio and this of course is the company tablet here the Trimble where we do all our work and I got my GPS hooked up here and up here we got the visors you can see my, my handy dandy pen holder that I got at the company store holds them in there tight even when they're upside down see that here we got a mirror that we stuck on the middle visor this is the wife's sun visor ah, there's your leather air horn and a little trinket from my dad right there hanging off of it we put an S hook up here to hold my my headset and there's your CB mounted right inside there real easy to install on the Kenworth because it's all pre-wired and it just slides out on this little tray here and looking up above we got a reading light here for the driver's side a storage cabinet where I think on the freight liners it's much bigger but on the Kenworth it's easy access for my paperwork and stuff while I'm in the driver's seat and then this little tray here across the top and this little little pocket for storing stuff like my notebook and another little pocket for Tanya and her storage cabinet up here with a first aid kit and all the truck manuals so they're close at hand uh, she's got her reading light the seat controls are the same as always your air up and down your lumbar here right there now we we went out and almost right away got these nice seat covers at a Kenworth dealer because I wanted to keep the seats clean any spills of course will leave stains and you don't want to leave that for the next driver and I just love the look of these it's even got the Kenworth logo on it look at that and some handy little storage pockets on the sides and the front beautiful beautiful Oh, more controls up here. These are your, your uh, headlights and your uh, sleeper bunk light right here. And your hazard lights, right? Your vents here on the front. Time to put some cool little cable holders there to keep her stuff up off the floor. Hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you are liking these videos, you're watching our videos, and you decide to come and drive for Crete, make sure you give them our uh, referral code, S-L-O-K-E-V. Yep, I'm the slow Kev. Okay, back to the tour. Yeah, we look down here. We got a 12-volt outlet here and one on the side for plugging in all your devices. There's even a little one here on the stereo that you can use, and we got a splitter on that one. And up in here is the old glove box, Tanya's coffee bar, workstation, whatever. Another thing we notice up here on the dashboard, you got this long double divided tray that wasn't on our 2019 Kenworth, so anything you put on the dash would just kind of slide off down into the, into the windshield. So it's kind of nice to have a little, little catch ridge right there. We can leave a few things in there, closer at hand. And looking over here at Tanya's seat, you can see 
the armrest has this rolly dial thing. That's so you can set the height, right? The different positions. Okay, here we got the side curtain. It wraps around and we'll go all the way to halfway up on the windshield and then the one on my side comes over to meet it. Then we also have the, uh, the big curtain here for closing off the bunk space for more efficient heating or cooling and privacy and darkness, which makes sleeping a little easier. Yeah, I think that's it in the front. So let's go to the back. Back here is where we live. And you can see there's a top bunk and there's a net so you can secure yourself in there if you happen to be in the bunk while the truck is moving. And I use it to store one of my hats. And this bunk will lift up and lock in the upright position. And you pull on this, this little line here to, to free it up when you want to bring it down. You got a reading light up there. And you can see a vent back there for the bunk air conditioning and another one down by the feet. Uh, one thing I didn't like about the Freightliner is they put one here next to your head blowing right in your face and also the ductwork took up space inside that cabinet. It was, I don't know, that, that's something new but I don't like it very much. And we got uh, storage up here. As you can see we filled this with spices and utensils and knives, cutlery, kitchen tools, oils, vinegar, you whatever you want there. Spices, cinnamon, honey, and our old birthday card. And then above that is a big old shelf. This is where I keep all my clothes in the in the box and behind it and around it. Now in the freight liner we had a lot more cabinetry so this was all all my stuff was actually in a cabinet I could open and close. But it's okay sitting on the shelf. Nothing's ever fallen off of there. That's our tea towel hanging from another S hook. And then on the other side, over here, another shelf where I just keep junk next to my head. If I'm sleeping up here, all my all my nightly stuff goes up there. And again, a big a big tall cabinet here. It's a little wider at the top as you can see. And in here, In here we keep our dishes, our frying pan, our kettle, up on that, that bump out on the side. You see a couple of shelves for tea and coffee and granola bars and whatever you can stuff in there. And There's a lower shelf. That's where we keep a lot of food and dry goods. Those two spray bottles, that's how we wash our dishes. And on the door, there's a pocket where we keep the cutting board, some zip locks and a handy dandy mirror up above that second pocket for checking your look when you get up in the morning. And right below that is the refrigerator. Yes. A pull out drawer style. And in the Freightliner we had uh, kind of like a mini bar fridge with the door that swings sideways. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to both but I think this I like this better because it's easier to access. There's a freezer with ample room. And down below that, one more drawer. Keep all the canned goods and it's very deep, holds a lot of cans. And like I said, on the Freightliner, the fridge was over on this side. It had a door that swung out this way, and if you wanted to get at anything way in there, you had to crawl on all fours and get down there and huff and puff and experience intense pain. So I like this fridge better because it's easier to access. It doesn't necessarily hold more, and it's up off the floor, so it's easier, easier for that sake. And on this side of the bunk, you got a couple of shelves for more stuff that you want to store down there. And then this little little table here. Now you might recall on Kenny Riggs, the Kenworth I had with uh, Werner. There's a big old table here that you could swing over this way, or you could swing out, and it came out 
came out almost as far as the seat to give you a big workspace here and I really miss that I think that's a great idea but Crete doesn't doesn't think it's necessary just an extra extra expensive option but I will say as far as workspace in here like if you wanted to work on a computer or do some writing or even preparing food that extra table space really comes in handy so right now all we've got is this and the little step above the fridge and if I open the door you see there's just enough room to do a little food preparation there and that is how we live as far as cooking and preparing food and I just want to show you the lower bunk we have a vent over there and on my other you know like when I was work when I was with Werner in the other Kenworth there was a big old window here that you could open up and had a screen which gave you a lot more ventilation at night and kept the mosquitoes out if you open that thing you will see you can uh, you're gonna let some bugs in and that window I thought was a great feature for blindside backing because your, your mirrors only go out so far then you lose sight of the back of your trailer but if you look through this window, you can still see it for most of the maneuver. So uh, you, you got to do a lot more get out and look with Crete. Now over here, there's a 12 volt power source next to the bed on this side. And more bunk AC vent there, a big speaker back there. On the other end of the bunk, the same deal. And you see these, these sort of seat belt hookups, that's for your safety net if you're using the bottom bunk while the truck is moving. And something you got here, at this end of the bunk, is a very bright reading light. It basically shines down. If you were sleeping with your head at this end, that light would be very useful. But for anything else, it, it pretty much blinds you, shines right in your face. And if you sleep with your head at that end, you don't get a reading light. So. Kenworth, maybe you want to think about that. And right here are the controls for the bunk heater and the back air conditioner with the little digital clock thing for, uh, for your alarm and all that. And you got a switch here to lock the doors while you're in the bunk and a switch to turn on and off the overhead lights back here in the bunk area. And a nifty little storage pocket. Now we, we got the bunk oriented this way because Tanya uses an APAP and she sets it on that table there at night and there's no room for it on this side. So this is why we sleep this way and we use this little tray that we can slide it on and off that table so at night we have it on this table with all your nightly stuff and your APAP and all that sort of thing but you don't want it there while you're driving it'll wind up on the floor so it goes over on the bunk while we're driving. And at the back of this table, you see a couple of nifty little pockets. You can set a drink in there or some loose change and that sort of thing. And uh, something else I wanted to point out, if you look down here under the bunk, you see a 120 volt outlet, yay. On the other truck, we had a hole cut in the wall there and you had to feed an extension cord through and the outlet was inside the storage under the bunk. So now they've thought enough to put the outlet facing out, which is where you're going to use the darn thing anyway, right? And there's your, your bunk heater exhaust right down there. And I would also like to show you all the storage underneath the bunk here. It's pretty impressive. Now we can lift this bunk up real quick. Now on this truck, you have an access door on both sides. Goes right over there, and the other one's right over there. So I can open that door from outside the truck and grab tools and fluids and all kinds of things. And the great advantage to that over the Freightliner, the Freightliner we had only had the door on the driver's side. And if you're stopped on the side of the highway and you want to get your triangles out, they stick them down on the driver's side, which means you got cars whipping by you at 65 miles an hour and you're standing there trying to get your triangles out of that box. So on the Kenworth, you got the door on this side and once you move some of that food out of the way, you can get your triangles safely on the passenger side of the truck. So that's a good thing to keep in mind too when you're looking at trucks. You don't want to be playing around on the driver's side when you're parked on the side of the highway. It's very unsafe. Now you see we got bags and boxes, the inverters right down here, and the heater 
right here and your bunk AC unit right there and it's vented up to the upper bunks so lots of storage room in here easy to access just lift the bunk very comfortable bunk too I might say all right one more look around and if there's anything you want to ask about, put it in the comments down below. And you can see we've, we've made use of a lot of S-hooks to hang things up and keep them in conveniently located areas that are easy to reach, and keep things dry. One thing you notice is the armrest on the passenger seat here but none on the far side of the passenger seat, whereas the driver's seat has both. Another little extra feature that uh, the company saved money on. And these windows at the top bunk, they do open. They crank outwards at the bottom. So you can leave them open if it's raining and you'll get some fresh air in here and they are screened to keep the bugs out. There it is, man. Home sweet home. All right, YouTube fans. That's the tour of the 2024 Kenworth T680. I know you've all been curious about what it looks like inside. I hope it satisfied your curiosity. If you have any questions, put them down below, please. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. And I really do appreciate all you people who hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're over 20,000 now. It's just amazing, all the people that are watching the channel and it makes me so happy and so proud of Tanya because all the all the hard work she's done it's a good thing I hope you you appreciate it too so once again thumbs up subscribe uh, notifications all that stuff all right have a good day I'll see you out there on the road bye for now